Over the last four months, I have been dollar cost averaging into my crypto portfolio's top holdings every single Wednesday. Now, amongst those top holdings is Solana, of which I have purchased 378 tokens or about $8,700 worth of soul. Although this isn't my biggest position, it is still a substantial amount of money, and I want to tell you exactly why I personally am purchasing a crypto that many people believe is too risky to be buying at all. And of course, we're going to be starting right now. Now, if you're unaware of what Solana is, it is a blockchain platform which uses a proof of stake mechanism to provide smart contract functionality. It has a native token, the SOL token, which at its peak had a market cap of over $70 billion and a total price of $250. Now the highs that it saw were due to its massive ecosystemic expansion, its low gas feeds, its scalability, the embracement of NFTs, the embracement of the metaverse, and the number one thing that would cause its demise, its strong access to capital through its VC backers. Now, although in the modern day, its reputation has definitely taken taking quite the beating and its price is just a shell of its former self, I believe that Solana could be positioning itself to be way more intrinsically valuable than it has ever been, especially moving forward. But in order to be able to show you how this is the case, I need to take you back in time and show you how we got here in the first place. Solana Labs was founded in 2018, later launching their native token, the Soul token, in 2020. Now, due to the aforementioned VC backings and its massive network, Solana absolutely took off, replacing other altcoins such as Litecoin, ADA, and XRP in terms of excitement, and it seemed that Solana was at the pinnacle of the market, well, until things started to go south. You see, when there's a new layer one blockchain, they are destined to run into problems. Now, what's good about it is typically early on, no one's really using your blockchain, you've not really onboarded any devs, onboarded any companies, so if something breaks, you fix it, and typically no one really notices. But due to all of the things that we just mentioned, that was definitely not the case for Solana when they first started their own. You see, as a result of their strong access to capital, and their great timing in the market and the later explosion of NFTs in the metaverse, Solana saw growth faster than just about any other layer one that we have ever seen. And with millions of daily transactions comes millions of potential problems that they had never faced before. From network outages to hacks to exploits and much more, the Solana team was immediately thrown into the fire and had to battle every single day to maintain the position that they had put themselves in. Now, fast forward a few months into 2022 and they had survived their first big explosion. Of course, there were problems problems and there were bugs, but they fixed them and they pressed on. But little did they know something was coming around the corner that they had never been through before that was going to be the biggest test that Solana had ever seen, and that was a bear market. From January to October, Solana's price fell over 86% in line with the rest of the market as liquidity dried up rapidly, the network outages continued, hacks became more frequent, and scams were at an all-time high in the world of digital currencies. But although things were bad, they were relatively expected. I mean, we can use Ada Cardano as an example example, which saw its own price fall over 99% from its bull market high to its first bear market low. So as you can see, this is rather expected from a cryptocurrency that's entering into its first bear market. What you have to understand is that when you're entering into a bear market, you're going to want your money in places that you believe is safe. And if you don't even know if a company is going to survive the bear market, obviously you're going to pull your money out, causing the price to go down dramatically in its first bear market. So seeing Solana go down 86% wasn't all that surprising and again was rather expected. Expected. But what we didn't know is that there was a much bigger shark that was lurking in the waters. As I mentioned before, Solana saw the vast majority of its growth due to the substantial amount of capital that was raised at its inception. This allowed them to onboard new companies, acquire partnerships, mass market, and much more. And although this was fantastic in the good times, it posed a massive risk during the bad times. You see, the issue is that although those good things can happen in the bull market, you are then putting all of those tokens in the pocket of one specific entity. And when things get ugly, things get bad, they may have to sell those tokens, they may go bankrupt, things may get ugly for them, and they may not be in a position in which they can hold those tokens, so they are then forced to inject all of that supply onto the market, obviously crashing the price as they do it. Now, this is something that people became very curious of whenever we started to see the market getting bad. People were saying, okay, a lot of VCs are in Solana, are they going to make it? Are they going to survive? Well, as we got through most of 2022, it seemed like we were somewhat in the clear. No major VCs seas had went bankrupt, things were looking okay even during the Luna crash, and it seemed as if the coast was clear, well, until November 11th of 2022. On November 11th, 2022, we saw the collapse of FTX and its sister company, Alameda Research. At the time, Alameda Research held over 48 million sold tokens, which equaled over 13% of the total supply. And the immediate fear was that in the bankruptcy process, Alameda Research would have to sell all of these tokens on the open market, obviously crashing the price to levels that 
we hadn't seen before. The fear of this happening caused many investors to sell their Solana tokens, which ultimately sent Solana's price all the way back down to a multi-year low of just $8. Now, although the price of Solana has recovered back up above $20, many people do still have loads of questions about what the future of Solana holds. So now that you understand the hardships and the process that got us to where we are today, let me now explain to you why I've purchased nearly $9,000 in Solana tokens just in the last four months. You see, as an investor, my main focus is to look for assets that I believe to be intrinsically undervalued. Now, one easy way to determine whether or not an asset is undervalued is to compare its growth to its price. And I believe that where we stand today with Solana is in a much more advanced position than where we were a year ago when its price was above $100, around $120. A year ago today, we were faced with consistent network outages, daily hacks and exploits, a questionable reputation, and clearly a massive VC problem. And I'm under the belief that most of these, if not all of these problems are being resolved and will be resolved potentially by the end of this year. In terms of consistent network outages, we have seen them slow down substantially as a result of Solana's formation of their adversarial team, which is comprised of almost one third of its engineers designated specifically to stabilizing and correcting their blockchain errors. Now, this has also led to an increased amount of security on chain, helping towards the exploits that we had previously seen. Another thing that has contributed to helping these exploits and these hacks is the fact that many of these different protocols that were vulnerable have already been hacked. And so sadly, although there were losses involved, many of the lessons that needed to be learned in order to secure these protocols has been learned and of course implemented within the modern protocols. so it isn't something that we see as often, especially in the modern day. Now that takes us to our next two issues. You see, these are the two issues that will really determine the future of Solana as a whole, at least in my opinion. You see, the main cause of concern here is that if Alameda Research is forced to sell its tokens on the open market, it will of course inject the market with an overflow of supply and with a limited amount of demand that will consider consistently crash the price of Solana, as we mentioned before. But that's not what I think is going to happen, as this does play out, especially on the route that Solana is on right now. You see, the route and path that Solana is on right now is one of dedication and commitment. With the release of things like their mobile phone, with them working on their blockchain, with them increasing their partnership expansion, all of these things are building confidence and faith into their company, which was lost, especially in the last year. And I'm under the belief that if they continue to do what they are doing, they will be able to reinstill that faith into the company from some of these major investors. And as that does happen, if we do see a point in time in which Alameda Research must sell their tokens, if there are confident investors who are willing to purchase them through OTC trades, then it wouldn't impact the market. Of course, that overflow of supply would never even hit the broad market, and it would never impact the Solana price as a whole for the most part. And so if they can continue to build up this reputation, if they can continue to restart, let people know that they're not going anywhere, that they are dedicated to the people who support them, then I'm confident confident that there will be people who are willing to take those tokens from Alameda Research over time and obviously start to you know, reduce the risk of what could have happened if Alameda injected all of those tokens onto the open market. Now, if this hypothetical situation was to happen, that would then reinstate the reputation of Solana, remove those doubts, and further eliminate the VC problem because all of those tokens would then be diversified amongst multiple investors. With the correction of the first two issues and the seemingly inevitable correction of the second two issues, it is it's clear to me that Solana would be in a much better position than it was just a year ago and the value of it intrinsically would be higher now than it was then. And because of that, I am continuously building up my Solana position because I believe that when liquidity re-enters the market, the price could recapture some of its former glory. Now I understand, I am taking a risk. This may not play out how I think it will and the price could get absolutely destroyed. That is the reason why it is not my biggest holding. But I do believe that there is a future for Solana and I'm willing to take the chance. And of course, I would love to hear if you are down in the the comment section below. But until then, it's just a waiting game, so we'll just have to find out how this thing does play out. So I appreciate you all stopping by, and I will see you all next time. Peace.